Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercress, and welcome back to a brand new Let's Play. Uh, I can't believe I'm playing this game at last. It's Mega Man for the Nintendo Entertainment System, the very first game in all the franchise. Came out in America in 1987. One of the earlier third party games in the NES library. And while the games after it have gotten better and better and have gotten more and more complex, this is still considered one of the better games for the system, but it does have its problems, being the first of its kind and being released so long ago. Level design is kind of crummy. Difficulty is just ramped up. But at least you got infinite continues. Let's go ahead and start the game. And as soon as you start, you have six ch stages to choose from. You got Cut Man, Guts Man, Ice Man, Bomb Man, Fire Man, and Leg Man. These are the six Robot Masters. And the plot's pretty thin, but they're always pretty thin in the Mega Man Saga. Bad Guy sets out to take over the world again, in this case it's Dr. Wily. Sends out a bunch of Robot Masters. Mega Man has to fight them all, find Wily, beat Wily, foil plot, world is saved. Well, this was the very first game that actually did it. Now, we're on, obviously on a stage select screen. You use left and right to go through all the stages. You can't use up and down here, strangely. And you actually have to press start in order to select the stages you want. Now, in 1987, up until this point, you kind of had a stage start, especially in arcade games, but they were more of a difficulty select than anything else. You weren't really starting further into the game. You weren't really starting deep into the game. Here you have six actual individual levels, and you can choose which ones you want to play in whatever order you choose. But as you play through the game, through trial and error, you do realize that there is a specific order or two that makes stuff a lot easier. I'm going to select Cutman so this music doesn't annoy you any further. A lot of people tell you to use Cutman for your first stage. Other people tell you to use Bomb Man. I respect the opinions of both camps. But I'm actually doing Cutman first in order to make this a little easier in certain parts. It's a little harder than starting with Bomb Man, or maybe it's the same difficulty, I can never tell. But nevertheless, it does have its own strength and it's actually kind of worth it to me. And the controls are pretty simple. Left and right move you around. A jumps, B shoots. And you can only shoot left and right. You can't shoot in an angle, but only the weapon that you have equipped allows for it. And it's pretty obvious you need to avoid getting shot at. You only have a limited amount of energy as signified in the upper left-hand corner there. That little set of yellow lines there is how much energy you have left. If you lose all the energy, you're obviously going to lose a life. And we're providing some pretty easy enemies for the most part. But I still wouldn't want to get hit by them. Because they will knock you back a little bit, like so. Also, enemies do drop stuff sometimes when they are shot down and killed. But you're usually just going to get those small circles that have to be a different color no matter what part of the stage you're in. Like these little red circles right here. All those little red circles there, which again, the color always is always different depending on which part of the stage or a stage you're in. All those little spheres do is give you points. And I just managed to get a rare one-up, as signified by that Mega Man head. Don't expect those to pop up too often, because they're not. There are also little yellow globes that increase your life. The small ones that give you a little bit back, while the big ones give you quite a bit more. And you have little blue capsules that refill weapon energy. But we won't be able to really take advantage of those until later. Unlike future games in the Mega Man series, 
the weapon and energy pickups pop up far less often here than in future entries in the Mega Man series. So you have to get good. I don't really know what else to say. And I'm not going to fight every enemy. I'm going to avoid that guy I just jumped away from there. But I do want to collect energy and weapon power-ups whenever possible. And I want to shoot down as many of these guys as I can. All they do is just move around either horizontally or vertically whenever their eye is open. And I can't believe I missed him entirely. See what I can grab in terms of actual useful power-ups. There is a score in the top center of the screen, but it never pops up in any future games and it's basically worthless. Also, we saw one of these teams before. Just to get past them, just keep walking to the right. And as long as you don't stop, those little cut blades won't hurt you. Also, these things dive up or down towards you, depending on where you are, when you get close enough. And here's a big energy pickup just out there in the open. Don't expect to see that very often. Now, this guy here will shoot in eight directions. Thankfully, it's easy to see where he's going to go. It's easy to anticipate where the bullets are going to go. I should have known that was going to hit me. I should have realized that was going to hit me. But there was nothing I would really do to avoid that shot. And these guys... You do not want those things hitting you, because if you, they do, you lose a third of your health. And now we got these things. Whenever you get close to these little... I guess you could say turrets. They shoot a little five-way shot. And easy to anticipate where the shots go. But... They can hurt and knock you back a little bit if they hit. Now, you could actually go through these little areas here to refill on life. Just causes enemies to respawn because unlike future entries in the Mega Man series you actually have a long corridor with a few enemies in there that you can actually respawn and farm power-ups off of if you want to refill your life or your weapon energy but the way power-ups are given out randomly in this game with the energy and the weapon pickups coming up far less often than in future games you're probably going to not get very much and it's going to take a long time for you to get everything that you need. I'm just going to go ahead and go through this door and face Cutman. Now Cutman has a bit of a boomerang-like blade, a boomerang-like scissor blade that he throws at you. He flashes a little bit, he jumps around randomly, he flashes for a little bit, and you want to take advantage of the invincibility period. Just. Take good notes on how long it lasts, and the jumping and the blade throwing will be cut to a minimum. And you don't just automatically get the power up right away. Instead, you actually have to pick up this orb, then you get the clear points, which is always random, a random amount of points, usually some unit of 10,000. And then however many of those little points icons that pop up way too often that you got. You get that many times 100 for bonus points, and that's basically it. You can still die even after you beat a boss, because their projectiles will still be on screen. There were a few things in this game that were ironed out in future games, obviously. Also, unlike other games, you can actually play, well, unlike all but a few games, or unlike every other game, I should say, if you actually play a, a stage again that you've already completed, you do have to face the Robot Master again. <laughs> this only happens in this game. I'm sorry my English is terrible there, but, you know. Trying to explain everything as best as I can. Anyway, some Robot Masters are strong against their own weapon. Some don't have much of an effect compared to our regular weapon. And some are weak to a certain weapon. Elect Man is weak to the Cut Blade, which we got from Cut Man. We're going to play a stage next. And we get a random 
value of 8,000 points should we beat the stage. Now these things that are moving across the floor move very slowly back and forth. If you're at their level, they speed up. Now there is always one weapon in every one of these games that destroys one of these kinds of enemies, which there is one of in every game. You can destroy these things with the cut blade. So let's go ahead and do that because it makes this a lot easier. Doing the platforming is kind of hard in this game because watch what happens when I go a little bit and stop. Mega Man slides a little bit to the direction he was going before he comes to a complete stop. That was fixed in future games, but because he slides around when you let go of the control pad, you have to keep the slide in mind for when you do platforming. Or when you have the inch towards the edge of a platform. Because you never know when that might work against you. Also, here's the weapon select screen. C is obviously the cup blade. P is our regular gun. And of course, next to P is the number of lives we have left. If you lose all your lives, you do get the chance to either go to the select, stage select screen to get a new stage, or you continue all the way back at the beginning of the one where you died at. You lose all of your points, but again, the points are useless. So P for the normal gun, C for the gut blade. Also, the weapons aren't really named in the game. They're just kind of named in retrospect, and I've never really read the original instruction manual, to be honest. I was part of that crowd that actually got into the original series, not the X series, not the Zero series, when the Mega Man Anniversary Collection came in on PS2, GameCube, and Xbox, and I got it for my PS2 back when I was all of 18 years old. 17, 18. And these things, when they reach your level, they will shoot at you. I am making that look very easy. And now the introduction of a Mega Man series mainstay. The Blocks. You have to time everything, time your movements, so that way you can land on one block to another successfully. And just carefully inching my way up here, so that way I don't accidentally slide off the edge and I go down a screen. You'll be doing a lot of climbing in the Legman stage. Also, if I didn't have full energy, I would probably not try to get that. Also, you want to be sure you have your foot close to the edge of the screen. That way, you can jump off those blocks and hit the next one in succession easily. And I took a lot of dumb damage there. And after you fight those guys, you can either go to the left or go to the right. The left will have those things you can kill with the cut blade, the right will have more of those electronic barriers that we saw earlier. Those things will knock you down quite a bit, especially on the ladder, those little electrical barriers here. We've seen them once before and we're seeing them again. And while you have a much easier time moving here on the left side, so I'm taking the left side and taking good use of the cut blade. And now we're going to have more of those enemies. Want to keep on firing on those guys on the right, and that's how I should have done it at the beginning of the second part of the climb there, where I took all that damage. Now behind these blocks, which we can get rid of in some way, is this little item right here, which happens to be the same color as Mega Man. That is Magnet Beam. We need it to complete the game. We can't get to it right now. Our pet, our usual default weapon can't do anything, and neither can the cut blade. We will need either the power arm from Gutsman or the elect beam from Elect Man in order to get rid of those blocks. So once I beat Elect Man, I will have to go back here to get the magnet beam. But we are going to need it. So keep this thing in mind. Keep getting these things all the time. All the time. Energy and weapons pickups. This game is not kind to you when it comes to trying to get those at random. And you want to be careful going up here because 
If you get hit while on the ladder, you're gonna have a long way down. Vertical recoil is pretty bad compared to later games. Later games, you get don't get knocked down half half as much. You don't get knocked down as badly. That's what I'm meaning to say. And really had to concentrate there. I, you, I, I do not like those jumps. I've still had moments where I've actually died on those segments. And we're gonna wait right here. Or not! Uh, I'm gonna have to lose a life before I can actually do this part. I may die here, but it's gonna be the first of many deaths. But did you see how much energy that thing took off? That's why I say those things are something you don't want to tangle with. There was a way to stop them that makes them a lot easier to deal with, but we're not going to have it for a little while. But we'll mention it when we have the certain tool to deal with it, and after dealing with those things two times... It's time to face Elect Man. And apparently even on those blocks you're still not safe from the bane. Perfect. Also, checkpoints are kind of random, but at least if you make it to the, uh, quarter leading to the boss, you do get to continue from that point if you still ha have a life left when you die at the boss. So at least you got that working for you, which is nice. This game, everything can be fatal. Everything can be fatal. And I can't believe I dodged that. The best part about the cut blade it, is that it has this nice little ability to just boomerang back, like so. So if you're close enough and you got luck on your side, you can basically hit Elect Man at point blank range, knock him back, run away, and then have the have the cut blade hit a Man in the back as you're running away, giving you two good hits. And that saved me in this case, because I did not want to get hit by another leg beam before this battle was over. Now, we've already got Cut Man and Elect Man completed. We still have to go back for the Magnet Beam. That's why the game allows you to go back to earlier stages in Mega Man 1 and not in Mega Man 2 and 3, and then they brought it back in 4. Because you have, you have at least only one occasion where you have to go back to a stage to get something. The Magnet Beam is that one occasion. So we're going to have to do this again. So let's get out the cut beam here. We kind of have a good idea what to do at this point. So, yeah. This game. Not a very easy game. Not a very forgiving game. Level design is a bit awkward compared to future games in the series. The music got better as time went on. The gameplay got better as time went on. The idea got stale as time went on. There's some energy that I managed to get. But people like this series. They like certain games in the series. Some of them even like the whole series. And I decided to get those guys for good measure. So whether you like... Either certain games in the series, or the whole series as a whole, because... Some people believe you can never get enough too much of a good thing when it comes to the Mega Man series. 
even though there wasn't a lot of innovation as time went on. I mean, you still had the same idea of fighting off eight robot masters, and then going through another boss area, and then or set of boss areas, and fighting the final boss, and then saving the world again. I have to admit that this series was pretty groundbreaking. Capcom did quite a few adventurous things for its time. Back during an era where companies like Konami or Capcom or Nintendo themselves could seemingly do no wrong. We've been proven wrong in the future, though. But for now, we're just in a time where Capcom were kings. One of the kings. And that time was a great time. And here we are at the Magnet Beam. Now you're noticing that I'm actually teleporting back onto the gameplay screen when I unpause un the game either through the start button or the select button. They would fix this, I think, in three, but if you do this on a ladder, you get knocked off the ladder. So if you pause on the ladder, you better be ready to hold up on the control pad, so that way you don't accidentally drop off. And look at that, we got some big energy. Now, you've already noticed the little gray gauge next to the life gauge. That is obviously your weapons gauge. You gotta pick up the little canisters that are usually blue if you're Mega Man, but in, in case you're carrying a weapon, they match the color of your weapon. They match the color of Mega Man. And you gotta pick those up in order to recharge the weapon. Pretty obvious, but in case you've never played a game like this before, you know now. I could stop it there, but... Why stop there? Let's add a little bit of length to today's video. I wanna see if I can actually fight off a Luckman again. Which I'm pretty sure that I can. And we were already there anyway. Yeah, you want to wait at the ladder and then wait for that thing to make the high bounce before you go toward the door. Figured it out that time. Now to concentrate again. Don't get too close to where the beams are going to be, or it's going to be a long way down. But you probably already know that. And just to prove that, yes, you do have to face a Robot Master again, we're facing the Robot Master again. And then you have to pick up the orb again. And then you have to sit through the point grabbing again. But I'm surprised I've only died once so far in this Let's Play. I did not guarantee that this would be a no-death Let's Play. And I'm not going to guarantee that this will be done in one continue either. You do have infinite continues in this game. But we do have the Magnet Beam, which allows us to make platforms. I will show it off in the next video. Where we take on... Not Iceman, who is weak to Elect Beam. But rather Bomb Man. We're going to go to the other start point, And then we're going to go to Guts Man. We're going to tackle those two guys in the next one. Because now that I have the Magnet Beam, Gutsman is a little easier. So join me next time where I go through Bomb Man and Gutsman stages. Until then, this is Prince Watercrest. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!